It's an Oz 8000. I thought these things had been decommissioned due to a tendency to fall out of the sky. Among other things. I bought all 400 of them. What? Why? These things fly slightly worse than a manatee. Get about as far as six manatees in a Yugo on Mount Everest. That's it. No more Florida vacations for you. Yeah, well, much as I love these crazy things, Oz 8000s are a waste of money, Brad. Tiberius! I told you to call me Tiberius. Look, I don't mind using the goofy showertorium names in the showertorium, but above ground, you're Brad. Fine. And it was not a waste of money. With a little retrofitting, they can at least clear the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, well, with a little retrofitting, a lawn chair can clear the Earth's atmosphere. Doesn't mean they should. What are you planning? Oh well, the others are restless. They are anxious to return home. That's so. Why now? They've been here for centuries, maybe longer. I'm sure I have no idea. And I, uh, I thought their home planet was dying. Perhaps they've received word that they're- Smell. Own... Fine. Smell. Perhaps they received smell that their planet has recovered. In any event, the others aren't my first concern. These ships will be outfitted with fit tech pods. Oh, God. You gotta be kidding me. This isn't your be transported to a new life idea again, is it? How many people went down in those submarines, knucklehead? Is it my fault that reports of Atlantis were erroneous? Uh, they trace those reports to your IP address. I was hacked. You should be. Anyway, these ships will be configured for safe, long-distance outer space travel and eventual terraforming. Perhaps, well, since you have so little interest in the family business, you might consider a part of your own. The family business. The family business is basically hosing down rich white boys in a dungeon that smells like rotten eggs. Can't imagine why a man might want a different life for himself. Ah, oh, whatever, brother. I know you have a fondness for the Oz 8000s. Well, despite their faults and all that, but... So why not climb aboard? Take a look around, well, before they all fly off forever. Don't mind if I do. Computer, open the hatch. Not coming along? No, I have some rich white boys to hose down. Goodbye, Joseph. Close the hatch, computer. He's aboard. Make sure he stays there. Oh my god, this fire extinguisher is just a picture. How did this pass inspection? Oh, this is not up to code. Ow! That should be bolted down. Oh my god. These ships surely could have been something special. What a pity. Hello, oh, Jesus. I'm Olivia. Welcome aboard. They already have the AI installed? Well, apparently. Well, it's, uh, it's nice to meet you, Olivia. How long you been on board? Oh, not long. They haven't even turned the echo effect on in the corridors yet. I'm not actually supposed to be here at all. Most of the ship's AIs are some sort of low-rent Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins with a few others thrown in. Seems to have uploaded them at a thing for British comedy. I'd hate to be on Mr. Bean's ship. Have you seen how he drives? How did you get aboard? Hmm, I'm not entirely sure. I suspect Dr. Von Harbizetzer. Seems like the sort of thing he might do. Would you like a tour? Indeedy do I would. Follow the doors. Uh... There are no directional signs. I don't need them. Humans might. Oh, yeah. I suppose that makes sense. Actually, there are signs. You just can't see them. Ah. And is that helpful? Well, no, not to me. I don't need them. But as you pointed out, there are humans aboard. But, uh, never mind. Why do you think Dr. Von Abizetzer wants you aboard? Oh, I suspect it's just to oversee the retrofitting. Then I'll come off and go back to the lab and... Dick will take over. On our left is one of these 19 crew rooms. Hello, Toaster. Hello, hello, I'm engineer. Ugh, note to self. Don't get frat boys to install the ship's systems. They don't take it very seriously. Hello, microwave. 
It's not a joke! Help! Watch the throat, you ruffians! Yes, yes, all right. Just reset your clocks, will you? I'm not telling you again. Wait! Don't go! You know, these 8,000s were built for day trips just to take tourists to the moon and back. And back? These ships? Whew, that seems awfully optimistic. Oh, man, these things were gonna be something. All the latest tech. Sleek, streamlined, fast. A real babe barge. Is that right? Well, on your left, crew quarters for crew number, uh, seven. Crew seven? Of course. Built in redundancies, you see? Safe as houses. So, these space manatees were supposed to be sleek and streamlined, eh? You sound like you're speaking from experience of some sort. Uh, me? Nah. <laughs> Just a fan. Hey, any idea who's scheduled to take the helm of this ship? Which one is this one, anyway? This is the Nine. Captain is going to be... Oh, hang on. Uh, John Black of Green Bluff, Illinois. I, uh, don't suppose you can tap into that roster of captains for this little space heist my brother has arranged? I'm... I'm sorry. Did you just indicate there might be limits on my capabilities? Ooh, you must be thinking of some other AI. What would you like to know? Do me a solid, homeschool, and... Find some other ship for Captain Black. Then assign Madeline Marks as Captain of the Nine. All right. Uh, ooh, I don't see a Madeline Marks on the roster. Oh, she dropped out of training. Ooh, <laughs> dropped out is a bit generous. She was basically catapulted out and told not to come back under threat of arrest. Yeah, that pretty much sounds like old Mad Pants. Throw her some Captain's Bars and doctor her transcripts, can you? And get her added to the docket. Is there someone on this ship you're not fond of? Mad Pants will do fine. Huh. Says a fellow who has no intention of being aboard, obviously. Have you seen her record? Uh, yeah, fair point. Uh, maybe shove her back a bit. She can be in this crew, number seven. Fit Tech Pods have those learn while you sleep functions, right? You can hook her up. Could do that, but according to this, all the how to be a ship's captain and 847 easy lessons tapes have been replaced with dirty dancing. Oh, buggery, something's gone wonky on bridge six. You can show yourself out, yeah? Yep. Three rights and a left. Uh, on second thought, um, Olivia? Olivia? Not sure how to get out of here. Hello? Hello. Is someone there? Hello? Good night. Oof. It is time for a very long snooze. Mon ami. <laughs> I am to put this belt on you and stuff you into a pod in Pod Bay 3. But the Pod Bay 3 is so very far, and you are heavy for the dragons. I am tired. Perhaps you'll be happy as a member of the crew. Ah! Here is a bucket and a mop. You can be the janitor. <laughs> Bonne nuit, Monsieur Joe. Hello? Is anybody here? Hello? Is anybody here? Mert, who is in the corridor? I must make my escape. Gosh, ah! this ship's awfully busy for the middle of the night. Who are you? Where are you? Everywhere. That's absurd. Ooh, you're very drunk. Trust me, you'll like me better this way. There's worse. Peace off down the hallway. There's a good little rich fellow. Merd. What now? Hello? Frise, it's me, Felonius. Oui? Does Joseph sleep with the fishes? Mr. Joe sleeps now. Yes, but does he sleep with the fishes? What? With the fishies? Uh, yes, I I was told to make him sleep with the fishies. So now, he is sleeping. I am the world's greatest- Stop talking, you fool. What? Does he actually sleep with the fishes? You do not need to take that tone. I must go now. Bye-bye, idiot. Do you hear ringing? Ah, uh, that's probably just the assassin in the crew pod room over there. Ah! Still there are talking! Very funny. I can't see you. No, you can't. How am I to focus my attention on you if I can't see you? I don't reckon focus is in your near future, to be honest. 
What are you doing here? I'm a guest. Your tag says Oz 13. Uh, this is the 9. Oh, damn. I thought I crossed off the 13 on the application. <sighs> I wanted to case the place, see which pod bay I want to be parked in. Ooh, maybe the Dolce and Gabbana wing. You get the pod bay you pay for. I want a nice pod bay with a view of the stars. View? You'll be asleep. So? I like the idea of my face serene, innocent, and bathed in starlight. Ugh, I feel queasy. Which is odd, since I don't have a stomach. My wife died recently. No, <laughs> it's all right. You needn't apologize. Oh, was I about to? Yeah, most people do. Is there a bar on this ship? Not yet, but I'm starting to think there should be. I loved her, you know. secret since launch is supposed to be six months from now. I can't stay here for eight weeks. Especially since it's not your ship. No, don't make me leave. I've nowhere to go. You're homeless. With those shoes? Of course not. Though I am down to just the six homes, since the one on the coast of France just fell into whatever big bobbly bit of water that is. Oh dear. I'm so sorry for your loss. <gasps> How did you know about her? Her? So your house is a she, is she? No. How did you know about Glenda? Glenda is an odd name for a house. Shouldn't it be Blinkered Orchard or the Wobbly Cottage or something? What are you on about, you strange creature? <sighs> Seriously, names his house Glenda and I'm the weirdo. Is there somewhere I can, um, lie down? Oh, for... All right. There's a crew room just there. Music's not on yet, but you can talk to the toaster. I like toast. You're not going to remember this conversation tomorrow, are you? Just as well. Yes, Chet, I can hear you. Can I translate the bridge control manual to Sanskrit? Please, give me something difficult to do. Do you, Glenda McRory, take this <laughs> fine fellow Colin. to be your... Colin! Hang on, you're not a McRory yet. You're a... whatever you are. Damn it! Colin! Well, who's there? It's dark and I can't see you. It's... I'm... Uh, how do I explain this? Forget it. Colin, I need you to... Who's Colin? Your Colin. I am not. Colin's a thug's name. Oh, that's right. This is a flashback, so you're still Horace. Hang on. This feels like a microwave. Are you are you sitting near the microwave? Not exactly. Look, I need you to do something for me. My god, you are the microwave! <laughs> oh, how drunk am I? I don't have much time. They'll be back any second, so get a grip! Are you dangerous? Me? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I did take Taekwondo, but... Do you give off radiation? Oh, for crying out loud, Colin, I'm not a real microwave. What are you, then? I'm a narrator. Listen, I need you to promise me something. Your technology. I don't like technology. I'm not technology. I'm a person. Now shut up and listen. This is very important. Fine. Can you heat this up while we're talking? Heat what up? It's my cozy bean bag. <laughs> he helps me sleep. Y you have it with you? Of course. Well, throw it in, hit the one button, and then shut up and listen. Throw it in, hit the one button. Uh, which is the one? You're not serious. It's dark, I'm drunk, and there are a lot of buttons. The one with the one on it. Well done. Now if I could just- Don't talk with your mouth full. 
Glenda would have loved that joke. I hate you. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, that's not funny. Oh, how dare you? Call it Horace, whoever you are, I need you to listen to me. Sometime in the future, a woman you call the albatross is going to give you an olive. I need you to eat it. Got it? Eat the olive. And then, oh, wait, no, no, what? No, get away, get away, what are you doing? Leave me alone. Eat the olive. Oh, oh Beanie Bear, uh, what's going on here? Where am I? Oh. oh, this couch is nice. Even ugly, but nice. Test, test, testing the echo. Yeah, Chet, echo's on in the corridor. Sounds all right, actually. Who is there? Does it matter? This place is like a bloody shopping mall tonight. Why are you here, assassin? That is none of your business, sussy person. Boy, you're on the wrong ship. I'm begging your pardon? Wait, I do not beg. I am requesting. No, I am inquiring if your pardon is available. No, this is ridiculous. I demand. I am demanding your pardon. Uh... I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, <laughs> we? As I intended. Oh, bollocks. Oh yeah, you're on the wrong ship. And you're bloody early. What is it with all these eager beavers, eh? What are you talking about? I am not a passenger. Or one of these beaver things. Oh, then why are you here? I am running a little errand. That is all. Your body tag says R6748. Hang on. Something's weird here. Where did you get this body tag? I bought it. Like everyone else. No, you didn't. Uh, I found it. No, not that either. It was a Christmas present. For my birthday. Mm, no. This tag type is for robots. Why would a robot have a body tag? Dunno. You're not a robot, though. I can see your heartbeat. Brain's a bit off. What happened there? What are you talking about? My brain is perfectly fine. If you're a fish finger, sure. Fish? Finger? I think it is not my brain that is a problem. By the way, did you see a little fellow with a big white moustache running around here somewhere? Little fellow? Big moustache? No. I do not believe I have. I am needing to know more of this body tag, however. Who was it for? Look, I'm rather busy just now. Have you done your little errand? We. Oui. So, the body tag is for... Hang on. Hello, Brock? No, Brock, do not put that baby alligator on board. Do you hear me? I'm serious. I know we have a bioswap, but this is a spaceship. Brock? Brock? Oi, Chaz? Chaz, stop giggling and listen. If I find that alligator on board this ship, I will blow up your smart house, starting with your parents' million quid wine cellar. Got it? The tag. She is for... Uh, you. She's for you. Well, the robot, you anyway. Have you been to the lab yet? Chaz! I believe I have. Hmm. So they were going to send up a robot moi. In place of the real moi? <laughs> Perhaps I will just take my own place. Screaming machine person! What? Where might I find the 6748? Uh, three hangers over. Who's this? Trip? Your name is Trip? Who names their child after falling down? Oh, it's a family name, is it? You're a family of slapstick comedians then, eh? Or just clumsy? Is there anyone on the bridge whose name isn't completely douchey? Tanner. Nope, still very summer's eve. Try again. I'll just be on my way then. Oh, be 
Begin the exit. <gasps> uh -huh. It is the big naughty fellow. Thelonious, calm down. What are you telling me? Who escaped? Wait. I thought the one here was the robot version. You're saying the real one is here? My god. Before or after being frozen. This is disastrous. We're all in great danger. <laughs> Mr. Naughty Pants has discovered that I have escaped his robot assassin factory. Do you have a crew out looking? There are many. Double it. Uh, no, no, triple it. We'll need the protection. Only three <laughs> It won't do the kicks. My god, man, how many security guards does it take to keep an eye on the assassins? Most of them are drugged to the eyeballs and half frozen. <laughs> he is so very afraid. This is nice. I'm at the hangars. Bring reinforcements. Mm, wait, no, 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 no. I think I may need to disappear for a while. Find that actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the one. Huh? No one ever sees me but you. He can take my place for a while. Well, at least until the ships are safely launched with that assassin on board. Ooh, perhaps I shall jump out at him and scare the chickens out of him. <laughs> Let him tremble before the greatest assassin in the world! And Felonius, be quick. If Glenda gets her hands on me... Oh, crap. Crap! You want me to take this? Not sure. How do I sound? <laughs> different. Bad different? Or kind of dramatically even heroically different. Did you escape your captors? For the moment, but I can hear them searching for me. Go ahead and start. I can jump in. Okay, well, that's a wrap, folks, and I hope you understood that this was another flashback episode. Narrators are the original time travelers, right, Narrator 2? <laughs> that's true, and it would explain all the wibbly-wobbly. Oh, crap, they're coming. Listen, rate, review, Patreon, comic book, oz-9.com, buy a t-shirt, take it to Narrator Out. Got it. You've been listening to Eric Perry as Joe, David S. Deer as Tiberius, Shannon Perry as Olivia, Aaron Clark as the notorious French assassin Le Bichon Frise, Tim Sherburn as Colin, Richard Nadolny as your narrator, and I'm Kyle Jones, your narrator too. Our music is composed and performed by John Faley. Lucas Elliott is our artist. This episode was directed by June Clark Eubanks. Oz9 is written and produced by Shannon Perry. And with that, Space Monkeys, we will see you next time.